Welcome, adventurers. Welcome back to the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. Uh, my nose is very itchy, so if it looks like I'm itching my nose, it's probably because I've been um, snorting too much uh, crack cocaine, which is there a you go. bad Perfect. idea. Never do yeah. crack cocaine. Um, On the flip side, you're very ready for the show. I am so ready. <laughs> I'm aggressively ready and energized to talk about <laughs> to talk about uh, the divines and specifically RK. But we'll get into that in a minute. I am your host, Tom or Robots, and I don't actually do crack cocaine. So please don't take that seriously. Here with me, as well as somebody else who doesn't do crack cocaine, as far as I know, Lotus of Doom. What's up, Lotus? How's it going? Uh, things are well. Things are well. I like to stick to skooma personally. That's yes. That's that's the money drug right there. <laughs> yes. Yes. You want some moon sugar? This one exactly. thinks it is wonderful. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I don't know where my See, accent. My accent, centric. my accent kind of went. So yeah, yeah. I don't think they have crack cocaine in Elder Scrolls. It's all just no, skooma think, and like yeah, alcohol. All, right. Sujama. <laughs> So anyway, welcome we back an everybody. episode on all the drugs of Tamriel. The drugs of Tamriel. Yeah, there that we could. We could totally do an episode on that. Um but anyway, we're back. We're live. It's 9 p.m. on Thursday night at uh, Eastern Time, uh, twitch.tv slash robots radio. And we're continuing down this list of the divines and some of the other godlike entities in the world. And second on that list is RK. It's RK, okay. Um <laughs> I have to make that joke. I, I made yep. it during the pre-show, and I just got to keep going with it. It needed to happen. It needed to happen. Okay. RK. So, um, <laughs> I think from now on, whenever I say okay, I'm going to say RK, <laughs> and I'm going to look at people to see if they if they recognize that if I'm... If they get it, just like really double down on it. Right, right. I'm be like, are you Elder Scrolls? Cool. RK. <laughs> um, so, anyway, let's, let's just dig in. Um, so, as usual, we're pulling some info from the UESP.net article about RK and some other stuff that we'll get to as we go on with the episode. And it says here, and I, I love the little piece they put at the top here, because it's a little quote from the Ten Commands, Nine Divines book uh, or article, or whatever you want to call it. It says, RK says, honor the earth, its creatures, and the spirits, living and dead. Guard and tend the bounties of the mortal world, and do not profane the spirits of the dead. You can see where this is going, and I, I think you can probably already tell who uh, isn't a big fan of RK. So, mm -hmm. it says here, RK, or Ark, uh, comma, A? Yeah, I, I... No, it's not a comma, it's a, uh, what is that? It's a apostrophe, apostrophe, apostrophe. Yeah. Ark, apostrophe, I A. Think it, I think it's one of those things where like you say it the same way but some people just spell it differently right um right arc uh, yeah I, ar arc a like arc yeah i don't a. know if i'd actually say it any different if i saw it that way i i would assume you would whatever regional dialect would just be rk no matter what yeah and you know what just occurred to me um your your co-host on your other podcast tales of tamriel has yep. uh arcaneer uh, oh, has Ark oh. in his name? Maybe you we, know what? Maybe we need to tease him about being a uh, a worshiper of Ark. Uh, what we need to do is also just add an unexplained apostrophe <laughs> yes. to his name. <laughs> totally, totally. I'm sure he'd so, appreciate that. Whenever yeah, I, whenever Ark, I see him stream next, I'm gonna pop in and be like, "Hey, Ark and Ear." Yeah. So Ark, if you listen to the show in advance, you'll know about this prior to the joke being made, and if not. <laughs> you'll retroactively say that you realize that we gave you a heads up and you missed it because you weren't keeping up to date on our episode. That's right. This will, this episode will go up uh, two mornings from now for our non patrons. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I'll try to sneak into one of his streams tomorrow if he's streaming and be like, <laughs> what's up, Ark <laughs> in here? Um, anyway, man, we got, we, we're getting sidetracked right at the beginning. Um, usually I try to save that for like at least the middle of the show. So right. it says here, known as the Lord of the Wheel of Life, Wheel of Life, not Wheel of Cheese. That's a different uh, Daedric Prince. Uh, yeah, and the God <laughs> of the Cycle of Birth and Death is a member of the Divines and also a popular God in other cultures. RK is often more important in those cultures where his father, Akatosh, who we talked about last week, is either less related to time or where his time aspects are difficult to comprehend by the layman. So wait, wait, wait it's pause. Difficult to comprehend by the... Does this mean that RK is more popular in dumber cultures? Is <laughs> so, <laughs> just, that's how that's read. Yeah, which I don't think that's actually what it means, to, but... No, but I mean, that's kind of how it's worded. For uh, The only thing about that... Um, <laughs> 
which I guess here's your information on, well, that's awkward, is <laughs> Arcade's one of my favorite devices. <laughs> so what does that say about me? <laughs> well, you know, okay, so from, from at least as much as we've talked about so far, Arcade makes a lot of sense um, to be a more popular divine because the flow of time is not something that it goes away ever, or at least if it did, we wouldn't know about it. We talked about this last week, right? Yeah. It's one of those things that just seems like a constant. The cycle of birth and death is something that varies. Um, like the, the length of a life can change. Uh, the um, uh, how how healthy a birth is can change. Yes. Um, the cycle of birth and death traditionally in many cultures has been tied to the cycle of fertility of the land and the earth and those kinds of things. And that of course means that you will have a bountiful harvest or you won't. And if you don't guess what happens more death, <laughs> you know? So yeah, it's not something you that also... you it can expect to be the same all the time. Like the flow of time appears to be. Right. And in in this situation, you're going to, I guess, if you want to, instead of saying it like the layman as in like, you know, smart or you know learned or whatever, or not, we could just go to maybe more of because the, there's many hierarchies in, in Tamriel. Why don't we go with referring to it maybe almost as like the common man uh, in this situation, whereas everybody, whether they're scholars or not in the series, are going to be involved with this much more directly than a concept of time. Right. So right. it's less philosophical and more concrete. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly it. So that would have a stronger connection to pretty much everybody except people who research and study this stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. If you're going to philosophize about time and the beginning of existence, then you probably have some extra spare time on your hands to do that. Um, somebody who's worried about the life and death cycle is going to be everyone from the average farmer to uh, the slave labor Argonian trying to just get by, you know, in a Dunmer <laughs> uh, manner where they're, you know, a slave, any of that stuff. Right. Okay. Exactly. So, exactly. So, yeah. So let's go on. Um, he is the god of burials and funeral rites and is generally associated with cyclical occasions such as the seasons and life and death. And remember, I mentioned a little bit about um, the Hindu gods last time, uh, Vishnu and Siwa and, and you know, uh, Brahma. Those this is kind of um, connected to that less in the concept of time moving and more in the cycle of life and death, which is very much what those concepts have to do with. So it goes on, it says his priests are staunch opponents of necromancy and all forms of the undead and are empowered to bestow arcades blessings, which prevent the forceful misuse of a mortal soul. So this is interesting. And, and I kind of. Uh, uh, foreshadow this during the little intro section. Anybody who has anything to do with necromancy is doing something that is considered to be n unnatural. They're breaking the cycle of death and life. And right. so RK for one and his followers are going to be very much against that. <laughs> like, Hey, don't mess with death and life. You're not supposed to do that. Bad, 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 bad. And it yes. looks like they even are bestowed with the power to, in some ways, prevent that from happening. Right. And that's, you know, so uh, example two games, you know, longstanding villain, man of Marco, not going to get along too much with priest of RK or RK himself. Right. Right. Uh, and that's, the, this is going to come up a little yeah. bit later too. There's going to be, there's a, there's a bit later on. So hold on to that. Put that in your pocket, right. put Manny Marco no. in your pocket. He doesn't fit very well, but <laughs> stuff him in there. Yeah, we'll put him in the closet. It's fine. Yeah, just keep him. Yeah, he's probably the right kind of guy to keep in the closet. Um, yeah. He, along with your skeletons. Yeah. It makes sense. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, it goes on. It says, thus, anybody, any body properly buried by a priest observing the proper rituals is protected by our case law from be being raised as undead. So it seems like a very, very good deity to be worshiping if you want to make sure that you don't come back as one of many Marcos skeletons or zombies or something. So that's very interesting. This idea that nobody, uh, anybody who's being processed correctly, according to this, uh, is actually safe from that, which is pretty cool. Therefore, uh, an unnerving way of putting that, though, to be processed. Processed. <laughs> it's like, yes. It's a process. You, know, you got to do the little it, thing and it, bury them. When yeah. When, when I'm thinking process, that's not <laughs> quite. <laughs> I feel like we were 
delving back into the necromancy side of things, but I do know, I, I know what you're saying, but yeah, it's <laughs> you, you got to have the proper rituals for I, all of this. I've so. been known to play a necromancer. Maybe I've been a little affected by that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so it finishes up and says, therefore, necromancers view RK as their ultimate enemy and make covert efforts and maybe not so covert efforts to undermine his worship throughout Tamriel. Because of this association with and protection of mortality, he is sometimes called the mortals god, which is a cool kind of a cool thing. The, mm -hmm. the god of the mortals. There are two legends about RK's origin. And of course, with with all of this stuff, who knows which of these is actually true, which is like we talked about in the last episode, says more about the culture it comes from than the God themselves. But let's For dig sure. in. Let's dig into this one told by the Bretons is written in the book Ark A, the God of Birth and Death. It states that RK was once a mortal shopkeeper with a passion for knowledge. Now, we know about the origins of the Adra, and none of them other than Talos is said to have mantled into uh, at least uh, one of the divines, the positions. I mean, other other mortals have mantled before, but the position of the di divines specifically, Talos is the only one we know of. Um, right. So that this seems unlikely. And again, it seems more like a lesson than a actual like factual past. Yeah, uh, he found a book written in a strange language and spent years upon years attempting to decipher it, slowly ignoring everything and everyone else around him. Eventually, RK realized the book explained life and death itself, but by this time was at death's door with an incurable plague. Praying to Mara as a last resort, RK asked for more time to interpret the book. Mara gave him a choice, die now or become a god for eternity, charged with keeping the balance of death and life in the universe. Which is interesting because it puts Mara at the forefront of this and as the one who basically created RK, even though Akatosh is traditionally seen as RK's father and the, the progenitor of RK. So kind of an interesting mix of stuff there yeah that it gives i mean there, there's when we were discussing daedra there there's there's ages quote unquote related to you know ur da, you know ur daedra and stuff like that with the original and it this is very much playing on that from the divine's angle where it's like well according to this they would be mara clearly supersedes this mm -hmm. but if this was also true then there was an unregulated life and death cycle prior to RK, I right. guess. Yeah, like this must have, he may mean, how was he a mortal shopkeeper if there was no, right. no definition of what a mortal is based on life and death? You know, like, it's a little bit with the cart before the horse, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, a little strange. Now, the alternative is contained in the monomyth, which we've talked about before, which suggests that RK was one of the very first spirits to crystallize after the start of time, which has a little bit more of a kind of natural feeling to it. You have uh, Akatosh crystallizing time, and then because Akatosh is the soul, the soul of Ariel and all, all that stuff, um, and therefore the most powerful of the divines, the other divines then begin to crystallize because time exists. So now they have a time and space with, with which to crystallize in. Right. So, exactly. and if something is, or one of these is going to be powerful enough to control the cycles of life and death, then that seems pretty freaking potent. <laughs> so it, <laughs> it seems to make sense. Now I wouldn't, I wouldn't, be surprised if the story about the mortal shopkeeper and Mara wasn't a story that was passed down by people who worshipped Mara over RK and saw Mara as the predominant figure of the two and wanted to come up with a reason to justify that. That That's what that kind of feels like to me. Right. I, I kind of agree with that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yeah. this, this I, happens I, I, in human cultures as well, um, especially if you go back to uh, periods of time, like, for example, um, Old Testament biblical times where you have these different groups of people like the Canaanites and the whoever, and they all have their own gods and they have these stories as to why their God is more powerful or important or the progenitor of a competing God from another culture. And in some cases, they there's no uh, sense of like, only my god exists these other gods are false 
there's mm-hmm. more of a sense of like, well, all these gods exist, but ours is the best one, and here's why. Um, so there's a lot of that kind of stuff that happens historically. So this kind of feels like that to me. I, yeah, I, I I agree with that. Uh, again, I, it's I don't really have too too much to add there because I I kind of share your sentiments on that whole situation. Yeah, yeah. So. Um, any other thoughts on RK and the cycles of, of life and death? He doesn't, uh, well, a lot of these divines don't take such a prominent, uh, hold on stories in the Elder Scrolls so much because they kind of just be, act like they're behind the scenes in a lot of cases. So, yeah, the, the thing that's very different that I, I joked before it could be on this show it might have been on tales of tamriel or just in general i i joke about it if you want to get something done you largely don't pray to the divines you pray to the daedra <laughs> mm-hmm. um because you'll get results that way largely it seems like many of the divines in the series are more theoretical figureheads representing something than actually being involved with too many things you never really run into a divine where you regularly run into daedric princes and they're much much more involved than the divines it's you know we'll we'll get into other divines but like mara it's like well okay yeah that's that's great and then you have like your pledge of mara that's how you get married right right she doesn't show up and marry you you just get married in mara's name <laughs> like, right right and and, and, and and mara has to do with love fertility agriculture right, yeah, those I, kinds of things I, I, so exactly it would make sense that in some ways like going back to this other stuff that uh the, mara is a similar figure to rk uh fertility and agriculture is very similarly connected to life and death so you could see why like some cultures would focus on one as opposed to the other as their primary um but f- to kind of go off of what you're saying many of these concepts whether it's time or life and death or love seem to be built into the fabric of the world and they just kind of are does that make make sense yes it's, it's le- no, they're, they're less accurate they're more passive they're kind of just like yes, they are and that's the way it's explained is that these adra actually put themselves into the world and that's part of their power being expressed through the world and it's as if the daedra are sitting on top of those cycles and more actively engaging in in the world as it's already been constructed yeah and i guess that it almost makes them a little more relatable to us as we don't just have deities floating down related to your religion (laughs) in in real life to interact with us they're more metaphysical things and like we've referenced a couple times it's more of a representation of something and it changes culture to culture whereas the daedric princes are this is what i do when i'm here and i'm potentially going to directly screw stuff up um or help you in some cases (laughs) <laughs> so <laughs> they're they're more NPCs I- in the series and to your point these are more concepts although you know they have their physical manifestations and stuff like that I, mm-hmm. they, they're they always strike me as more of a flavor text to enrich the world than actual creature like entities um the way some of the other things are i guess would be the easiest way that i could put that yeah 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 and it, it makes sense that they're described the way they are that it's that yeah, they, they are just sure. like it they all represent these systems that underlie existence yep. um although some of the daedric stuff is kind of represented in the same way but it has more to do with personality and less about the nature of reality um Anyway, this section uh, finishes up and says sources have conflated RK with the Yakutan goddess Morwa, who we're going to talk about after the break in the Mm -hmm. past, although it's unknown if this was speaking to a true connection or was simply a scholarly mistake. RK created the sword of the crusader for Pelinal Whitestrake, who we talked about, um, I think it was about Mm -hmm. a year ago, uh, to help him defeat Umaril the Unfeathered. The Order of Arcae has temples in Sentinel, Alessan Hills, Shalgora, Dragontail Mountains, and Orsinium. So, fairly, fairly well known. Most of the cultures have some sort of connection to Arcae, and it makes sense. Life and death is mm-hmm. kind of a big deal. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, there you go. Um, so tell you what, why don't we move on with the middle of the show? We're going to thank our patrons and then we'll be back to talk about the Yakudans and their worship of Morwa and how that does or doesn't relate directly to RK. And then we're going to talk about the planets and some other interesting stuff at the end. So stay tuned for that stuff. The skies are marked with numberless sparks, each a fire and every one a sign. So here we are in the middle of the show and it's time to thank our patrons. Patrons, you guys are freaking amazing. Thank you for helping to support the show. Very, 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 very much appreciate it. Um, this, uh, <laughs> this, this wouldn't be a possible if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Um, so while I'm thanking you, I'm going to pull up our list and make sure that guess who's still on the list. Who do you think? I would guess the most tastiest pasta dish on the internet. Mm, that's right. Very generous. <laughs> yeah. Noodle al dente. Thank you, Noodle, for continuing to be our tier five patron. Um, there's plenty of room for other patrons as well. If you guys would like to help support the show, you can sign up even at tier one. You get ad free episodes a day early. Um, if you sign up as at tier four, you can join us at the end of the month and join us in chat. And there's a bunch of you guys at that tier as well. And this is something else that occurred to me recently because these shows are live on Twitch. Another really easy free way to support the show financially is through your Amazon slash Twitch gaming prime sub. So if you have Amazon prime, then you have a free uh, Twitch prime. They changed the name of it recently, didn't they? Like a Twitch prime sub is what they used to be called. Um, and it's it's really easy to do. So if you want to just pop over to twitch.tv slash robots radio every month, you can decide on which creator you want to send that to and it helps support the show that way as well so you're welcome to use those um and and it's absolutely free so if you're not using it already and have amazon prime that's money that you could be giving to a creator that you're already paying for so you might as well use it uh, and it doesn't have to be me it could be lotus you can if you want to watch lotus uh bat you know <laughs> ram his head against the wall playing some of these older games <laughs> then go support him as well use your use your amazon prime sub um so <laughs> So uh, that's another way you guys could be helping to support the show and it's no extra cost. It could be uh, any of these people in our chat who are calling themselves out. If they stream, <laughs> you could send it to them as well. Um, but just go use it. You know, uh, Bezos doesn't need the money. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Surprise. Twitch and Amazon have plenty. Share the wealth. <laughs> They've got plenty of money. You might as well send it to one of these creators. Um, but again, thank you to our patrons. You guys are amazing. And let's get back to the rest of the show. Yes, yes, you're entirely brilliant. Conquering madness and all that. Blah, 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 blah. So, Yakuda, always, uh, it's, it's going to feel like the kind of afterthought on a lot of these, but there's just less we know, honestly. There's less we know, and there's less involved with uh, the majority of the races in Tamriel. But if you come from Yakuda, if you are a Red Guard, then you might be somebody who worships uh, Morwa. Have you heard of Morwa? Is this is this a name that you're familiar with, Lotus? So other I've heard the actual name much like last week. I'm enjoying the sections on the divines because I've mentioned before that, like, I like learning some of the finer details of this stuff as we go. I, I have a more general knowledge. Mine's much more like delved into the game mechanics and stuff like that. So I have a background to this. I've heard the name Morwa mm -hmm. in series mm -hmm. and zero context to it prior. <laughs> so yeah. getting to read, read the notes on this was kind of interesting because I had no clue about this weird kind of crossover almost yeah so Morwa has a little bit in common with RK a little bit in common with um with uh, uh we just mentioned her what was her name uh Mara Mara Mora Mara mm? Mar Morwa 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 Mar yeah, yeah so Mor Morwa is M-O-R-W-H-A it's all uh, she's also or it she typically goes by a feminine uh, perspective here also called the teat god they're just kidding. <laughs> hold on to that hold on to okay. that and lady morwa is the yakudan goddess of fertility and love she is a fundamental deity in the yakudan pantheon and is the favorite of wives of tall papa we talked a little bit about tall papa before and yep. the world serpent and all that stuff Morwa is always portrayed as forearmed so that she can grab more husbands. And that is a quote. Grab more husbands. 
So I guess not only does sure. Tall Papa have multiple wives, but she also has multiple husbands because she's all about fertility. So, you know, might as well bring them all in. Just have a big old party. That's what those are called, right? Parties. Um, yeah. There's we'll a special word for that kind of party. Uh, her shrines are the shape of a beehive. She was described by potentate Versidu Shea as the lusty fertility goddess of the Yakutans, but not as lusty as Debella. <laughs> Mid-tier lustiness. <laughs> Mid-tier lustiness. Um, it doesn't say it right here, but she four arms aren't the only things she has four of. Uh, she also has four breasts. Um, her priestesses are known to officiate and marry couples. Sources have conflated Archae of the Divines with Morwa in the past, although it's unknown if it was a true connection or a scholarly mistake, as we noted before. Ornate silver teaspoons set of four are a way of honoring Morwa, one for each of her breasts, not arms. Although arms would make sense with teaspoons because you use your hands they just to pick, pick things up. Breasts. Right, sure. but nope, nope, boobs. All one, right. one for each of her boobs. Um, <laughs> perfect. Perfect. There is a Morwa conservatorium in the city of he Hegeth. There is one known play involving Morwa, which is called Lady Morwa's Latest Marriage. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> so, keeping busy. <laughs> just keeping busy. Keeping busy. But, you know, the life, death, cycle, uh, mother, fertility, all of these things are connected. And again, Mara seems seems like that could be similar as well to, to that connection. So there you go. Huh. So. Interestingly enough, because actually I was curious, I didn't want to jump too, too much ahead. But one thing that I think is actually somewhat worth a note, just talking about the cultural specific uh, bits. Since we're going with Yakutin at the moment, mm -hmm. um, when we're over in, it's actually uh, the, the best way to experience it is if you do play Elder Scrolls online. When you are in the Alakir Desert, um, mm -hmm. there are several situations where they... The Red Guard religion is very, very opposed to necromancy, and the dead need to be honored properly, and you actually, as a result of them being it's it's problematic for them to even defeat reanimated red guards because that's essentially a sin and in that situation you come in and basically lend a hand helping fight back all these reanimated zombies mm -hmm. <laughs> um in which case it seems like the red guard culture as a whole would have a pretty strong reverence for RK because of needing to adhere so, so much to that because men not even being able to slay back un or reanimated versions of your ancestors or whatever, yeah. that is quite a bind to be in <laughs> and relating previously to what we were talking about. If R.K. was a little more involved, like a Daedric Prince, for example, it would be interesting if R.K. Or was able to, <laughs> I don't know, actually come in and put these things down as opposed to until you show up. It's just zombies, and I believe they're called Runatu in the region, if I'm not yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't recall the, that's, the actual that's name. That's off the top. Yeah. If somebody knows specifically what they're called, but I'm pretty sure they're called the Renatu. Um, but if RK had a little more direct involvement instead of being this nebulous force, it'd be nice if RK could lend a hand instead of letting the Red Guards get <laughs> torn asunder by by their reanimated ancestors. So it's a little more, you know, of a of a in game reference to just how these things are a bit more metaphorical than they are direct involvement type of deal so mm -hmm. yeah 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 and you know there's always a little bit about like the power of a specific god might actually be related to how many people believe in or worship them 
and that sort of thing. So you have to wonder if that's the case, were these sure, versions of the valid. deities more powerful back in the time of Yakuda uh, than they are very valid more, um, more currently, you know, like how does that or, affect things? I mean, I guess if you want to get really stretched out on exactly how, well, I mean, even though necromancy would essentially be breaking the cycle of life and death, if the Z- Renatu or zombies are killing other people, then they're contributing further to the cycle of life and death. So is that also is that natural? The, I don't know. It gets, yeah. Is, yeah, it, is it, it, it unnatural little, death? Is it natural death? Right, is yeah, it, it gets a little it gets a little dicey. I'd be, I'd be curious on what people would think of a situation like that. Would that would that fit the realm? Because then you're using unnatural means to cause more of the cycle to perpetuate, but mm-hmm. by using the unnatural means, did you break the cycle to begin? I don't know. It's, it's getting weird. So we can just yeah. move on from that. <laughs> just, right. just a little side tangent from that quest line that I found fascinating in the Alakir desert of the Daggerfall covenant. Yeah. And uh, I think it just, you know, lends a little bit more to the idea that uh, it's all about interpretation, right? You know, like how do you interpret these things? And how Mm -hmm. do they actually play out? Um, So let's get to the planet. There's always a planet with these divines and the planet known as RK, which is sometimes called Arket, R-K-H-E-T, which is an interesting word and spelling for something similar to RK or. And this isn't um, this isn't fully uh, attributed in the wiki, but it seems that there's a reference somewhere to that being called Eye of the Thief. Maybe due to the location, okay. but it's uh, the attribution right now is um, not confirmed. So Interesting. You know, take that for what it is, is one of the dominion planets in the skies, Mundus. And according to the warrior poet Vivek, who, who we've talked about before, is uh, it is one of the eight known worlds. RK marks the eye of the thief constellation. The planet is simultaneously RK and the plan and the plane of RK, just like the other planets and their eponymous patrons. Mm-hmm. So we've talked about that with uh um uh my words fall on my uh, akatosh words, yes words words are difficult words are guys hard. Words, words are hard, hard. i'm the, I, I had to explain to my wife the other day um she was like just use use the alexa in order to just tell her what you want to do you don't have to hit the button and i was like it's easier to just hit a button than it is for me to remember what words to specifically tell her in order to get her to do the thing i want her to do and she's like really <laughs> and i was like yeah yeah just- when you spend a lot of time speaking you <laughs> tend like, to jumble up your words quite frequently i don't remember what specific phrase and how to like she's like well just just talk to it and i'm like it's still it takes me more effort to talk than just hit a button so i'm just gonna hit a button um old man me is coming out i guess um (laughs) speaking of old man me it is a month of my birthday and i'm feeling real old but anyway yeah um gonna start yelling at clouds hey get off my lawn cloud (laughs) <laughs> Dad, that's a shadow. <laughs> I don't care. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I need to figure out what I want for my birthday, too. I should probably come up with something fun to get. Um, anyway, it goes on and says, uh, for the longest... Oh, this part's really cool. So we, we talked about Manny Marco, right? For the longest time, nothing had orbited the small planet of RK. That was until the King of Worms, my, Manny Marco, had ascended to godhood in light of the warp in the West. And again... This is this section is needing a little bit of citation, but it seems that it is uh, it tends to be assumed that the planet that he would have ascended would have been RK because he was a necromancer. And get this. He had apparently taken on a new form, the necromancer's moon and eclipses RK's light once every eight days, shining down a purple light called the shade of the revenant. Various altars constructed in far off places like the dark fissures harness the light to create black soul gems. So get this when you when your main adversary as a necromancer and the most powerful necromancer the world has ever seen is a god and you ascend to a form of godhood, then why not turn into a orbital body around it in order to block its light? (laughs) Holy crap. That is awesome. That's that's like intense god trolling at that point (laughs) yes that is that is really freaking cool like this idea that like well it can't we can't completely block out the light but why not turn into a a moon that orbits it so at least you block it out one out of every eight days right that's that's really really a cool concept um 
so yeah yeah uh crystal talking uh crystal crystal talk crystal king i always want to say talk talking because it looks like chris talking Talking? yeah i don't know um he says he used the mandela if i'm not mistaken gotta love it um yeah so cool stuff what do you what do you think about this lotus uh that's so that was all new to me when i was the the planet part of this is very fascinating because as far as i know at least from any experiences i have with the games i i never realized the planetary connection this is all kind of new to me that the divines have their own planet, which I mean, it makes sense when you've got, you know, the, the Daedric realms and it's so, but finding out about them is very fascinating to see. Uh, Cause they're rather strange. I almost wish that the series would involve the planetary aspect of this a little more than it does. They've been delving into constellation types and things like that. Yeah um in more recent games but yeah just in general it's it's very cool to have that outer i i mean i guess there's there's only so much where you leave the physical plane of nern outside oblivion but it, it's just an extra layer of something there that i well, kind of have the, been interested in learning more about as we go through these yeah the um i mean think about the elsewhere storyline in Elder yes, scrolls online joe, and joe Yep. You end up on these moons, which yes. is cool. Like, uh, that's probably one of the first instances I can think of, of actually leaving the planet. If, you, if also, that's actually where you go. But it seemed like as far as I can tell, it was not figurative. It's not like yes, you were going you go to some sort of Joe's magical core. realm. Yeah, right. They were gorgeous, too. I just love the art design to them. It, they were very, very alien. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, yeah, I think that there's a lot to be, I, I mean, that might be paving the way in some cases for future ESO content or future sure. mainline games to experiment with, you know, moving off the freaking planet, <laughs> which, which could be cool or visiting other, um, other continents, you know, I mean, th that's just as foreign in some ways as some of these other planets, this idea that like parts of Yakuta might be left or at Mora or, you know, wherever any of these other supposedly sunken or supposedly still there or not still there continents out in the world. So hopefully we we do. I love when we get this this kind of stuff. I, I love I love when we get content that answers a little bit, but leaves us with more questions than when we started with. That's what I that's what I want. Yeah. And so the other thing that uh, I made reference to in the pre-show that I this is, I guess, just for the video version of this um i wanted to actually make reference so each one of these um divines has their own little statue which you will see in the different games uh eso skyrim everything like that you pray to them in games and you get different status effects which is also <laughs> kind of useful yeah. um at least in skyrim um so i didn't do it last week it We'll narrow it down. Alkosh, it's a dragon. There you go. That's <laughs> picture it in your mind's eye. It's a dragon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but RK's yes, RK, which for anybody watching the live version, um, is an interest some of some of these are fascinating statues, <laughs> which is why I kind of wanted to make reference to them. RK is like an orb with a it's an orb with a star that it's in the middle of on a pedestal i don't know um i, I was kind of looking i briefly i i don't know if these things have a lot of deep meaning to their design or if it's just like artistic vision mm -hmm. but i personally the reason that i thought of this and why i would like to show them going forward because it's just a visual aid for anybody that are in, that's interested um, I love the design of the one for RK personally. That's why it's on my desk. I didn't actually need to go get it off my shelf from behind me. It's just next to my TV. Uh -huh. Um, I have no idea like, you know, what, what the, what the reasoning is. I just think it's a very cool design. And like I made reference to earlier, I like just the concept of RK. I'm not a big necromancer person. I'm in the minority on that with a lot of stuff. People love their necromancy, but 
that's never my thing. When when I kill something, I want it dead. <laughs> so <laughs> I I just like RK in general and think uh, RK is a pretty cool um, divine, at least in theory. Even though you know, as we had said, they don't really involve themselves in mortal affairs all that much. But it seems pretty integral to things. Uh, to keep the flow of everything going. Otherwise you get into a messy situation of everybody's half dead or roaming around the fields as zombies and stuff like that. So, you know, you got to keep things buried or otherwise you're going to just end up with a mess. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so other, other fun little, little bits of, uh, I don't know, trivia here at the end of it. Um, so in other cultures, RK's name is a little bit different. Uh, Orky, is used in the Nordics, um, and then yep. the Bosmers and the Alt Altmers will say Zarxes sometimes, and that seems to be yes connected to RK. Um, also, and this is interesting. You talked about the symbol. Uh, the RK symbol uh, is on the label of Magicka and Stamina poisons, and um, uh, specifically in Skyrim. So that symbol will show up on some of the uh, the poison vials and things, um, and and this is kind of cool. RK was named after one of the original beta testers of Daggerfall. RK. Uh, wow. Now that's trivia right there. Yeah. RK. And uh, it's uh, Dutch Dutch D E U T S C H. I don't know the pr proper pronunciation of the last name. Um, but yeah, a lot of these were named after people who had worked on some of the early games. So pretty cool stuff. Yeah. 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 Well, um, that's that's what we got for RK this this week. We'll be back next week with another one of the divines. Um, what's going on in ESO lately? How have things kind of fixed? We talked Monday. It hasn't been very long. We, as we mentioned in the last episode, had to delay the last episode a few extra days, and so now Lotus and I are doing this again just a few days later. But have things yeah. kind of cleared up for PlayStation. And so um, they got the servers back up earlier than they had foretold which is you know probably a relief from them uh they've had to shift things around a bit where <clears throat> you were going to be missing rewards theoretically for stuff so they pushed stuff forward gave us some extra gifts on playstation and then they also universally extended the um anniversary event that is currently going on uh in elder scrolls online so that's that's pretty neat for everybody involved um yeah it's just more event stuff it's still going on for like a week or so a little less than that now but um yeah eso is still chugging along lots of uh new stuff coming out for the new chapter on the way that'll be hitting pts before too too long they're starting to do preview events for it and all that good stuff so exciting stuff coming to all of those of you who actually play elder scrolls online yeah yeah, this is kind of that time of the year where it gets uh, the buzz just builds and builds for the next few months until it yep. until it releases. So that, that's fun. It's good times with that. Um, I need to go finish up some of my questing in some other areas in order to make sure I'm ready. So I've been. Yeah, the prologue's out so you can do that. Yeah, too. prologue's out. I need to do that. Uh, I've been pulled back to Fallout 76. I've been pulled back It'll into happen. New Vegas because we're talking about that in the Fallout lore cast. I've, I've just like every time and then there's new games that come out and i'm like oh that looks good i just get i just want to play all the games i just want to play all of them can i play all of them can i play them all at the same time is that possible <laughs> i think i need extra brains to do all of that mega multitasking oh yeah mega multitasking awesome well uh you got anything else going on before we head out um not too much uh we'll be recording tales again ideally uh on saturday i might end up being a little late because i've got something going but i'm still hoping to make it uh for the show and otherwise i've just been kind of uh o overwhelmed and dealing with real life stuff so i have not been able to stream myself uh which is unfortunate because i have a lot of fun doing it and hanging out with everybody ideally i'll be able to get back to it pretty soon at the moment uh it's really about getting back to battle spire for everybody's entertainment so i can progress through that but with the new champion point system in elder scrolls online and currently having double xp which lets you get champion points faster i really have been making the most of that when i have time to play so Hopefully things will settle back down and I can get back to streaming on my own stuff as well, because uh, I like being able to 
stream before this show and then <laughs> just kind of jump over from that. And I haven't had that option recently, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully that works out. Um, yeah, it's yep. always it's always fun to uh, when your audience comes on over and you know chimes in and stuff. So love seeing those guys during during our streams um let's see what do i have going on uh i've been focusing as i mentioned before uh in the last episode a lot on our uh rocket club members people who want to launch their own podcasts and you know talking with that group and helping them out so if you're interested in starting your own podcast go check out robotsradio.net slash rocket dash club for the tips and things that uh that i can share with you because that's that's what we do i help a bunch of new podcasts get launched make sure that they're marketing themselves create correctly designing the show the way they should that their gear is what they need to get the best quality they can get because you, you want to make sure that that first episode is as good as possible because it's going to affect your potential listeners from that point forward so i um, happy to help you out with that stuff go go check that out and otherwise just been you know streaming some games and shows and doing doing the things i do and if you are interested in joining us chiming in on any of the conversation then check out the discord the robots radio discord send us some notes and messages over there or just you know join us for a future stream that's what that's what we got going that seems to be about it um this feels like a, a quicker episode than usual i guess there isn't as much to go about uh, into the about divines, okay yeah the divines yeah. are probably going to be a little more condensed than some of the episodes because they're not as involved as some of the other topics we've been doing so i would imagine most of these episodes will probably be a little under an hour as opposed to yeah just kind of going over that hour mark. I know we always try to keep it around the same time, but these ones just informationally, I would imagine that we'll cover everything unless there's something that I don't know that we'll be learning <laughs> in one of the other ones. Uh, they'll probably, I would assume all be a little more condensed at least on a whole. Yeah. Yeah. So one last, one last thing, Lotus, w we know that we're also coming up on the summer, right? We're in the, we're in the spring, we're in the build up to what is going to be the E3 digital event and potentially some info that's being released or new stuff from bethesda do you think we're going to get more info on the next elder scrolls and i think you might still be muted because i see the light blinking there you go thank you for pointing that out <laughs> yeah i did not realize it was um <laughs> yeah i'm i'm not sure i still think that the next one is a ways off i, I don't <sighs> yeah I, I can't imagine we're going to... I do think we'll probably see something with Starfield, but I cannot imagine we'll see anything with, like, an actual Elder Scrolls 6 beyond maybe, like, another little short teaser. Or Not like a like little that. story teaser or some sort of, like... You know, like a... What if we get a teaser trailer? What if, That might be possible. It, it doesn't show just, any in-game stuff. It maybe just gives us a little glimpse of, like... Oh my God, is that this character? Oh, or something like that. And then, of course, keeps the buzz going. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think that as much as everybody is excited, and they have dropped little hints here and there on Twitter and uh, you know, etc. But I, I can't imagine that they are going to jump to this before. We see Starfield like that's the yeah. next bullet point. Yeah. So as interested as everybody is, and unfortunately, there's still a lot of people who don't want to acknowledge that Elder Scrolls Online is a thing because it's not a single player game. Right. Which is, you know, you do you. But um, the game is immensely popular and, mm -hmm. and makes them a lot of money. They're not going yeah. to probably rush out the next Elder Scrolls game until they start to see at least something of a decline or at least a stagnation because right now it's not even stagnating the player count just keeps going up yeah so 18 million at this point yeah, yeah they're yeah. not they're not looking for a reason to move on from the storytelling in elder scrolls online yet there's still a lot to be covered so i know people are excited for it but that Releasing Elder Scrolls 6 will kind of dig into the same demographic of players. Mm -hmm. So I would just be personally very surprised 
if they rushed into something like that. Yeah, I, I doubt that they're going to. I mean, they're, nev- they're obviously not rushing. Um, yeah. But at the same time, there's part of me that's just like, are they going to tease us something? Are they, are they going are to they give us tease another us little morsel? <laughs> Which in the way that you could do that in, in a way that it would actually build ESO would be to tease a character or event that is connected. We talked about a little bit about this last week that is connected to maybe a, a new year of content with ESO in the future or the current year of content of ESO. Right. You know, like, oh, this is what TS, TS6 is going to deal with on some level. And by the way, if you want to know more about that right now, things are happening in ESO that tie into that, that set a foundation historically for the things that w- might be happening in TS6. So I don't know. Right. It's just a just a thought. I'm, I'm just, you, you never like... These studios are huge and they're big and there's lots of moving parts, but at the same time, there's so much potential for some really cool crossover stuff that you could do. And they've done in the past, you know, like tie-ins between Legends and ESO and like things like that have have, have happened. So you never know. I like the crossovers when they do them. So it's like more of that is is new brand synergy i think is the ridiculous name right spun for that stuff right. more of that i love that stuff brand synergy there you go all right well that's just some more fun speculating i love i love a good speculation um i also like when i speculate and i'm right about things but i also enjoy when i'm wrong because then usually i'm like oh that's cool anyway yay so i mean not to drag this episode out to actually get us to an hour but <laughs> one thing just quickly to mention uh in terms of speculation a couple episodes back we when you and I were kind of just spitballing ideas on um, what could be coming in the flames of ambition, they have recently shown more of that. And the um, oblivion gates. Yeah. The portals actually, we, we got tagged about it. People have been bringing it up. Yes. Our idea of kind of like, well, I don't know, maybe it'll be a little more of a, a, an instance thing. Turns out it looks like it just straight up is. And yeah. we were more on the ball than it seemed like we were. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, you never know who listens to these shows. Um, I do know that people at Bethesda listen to these shows. Uh, so yeah. you, you have to wonder, like in the back room somewhere, if like after the show dropped, somebody, like, somebody oh looked at somebody else and was like, <laughs> Did you did you hear the episode that they just did? Yeah, yeah. they they nailed it. How, did anyone leak that? No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, so that was yeah. No, we didn't was, know. Uh, we didn't know. That was just speculation. Um, but yeah, yep. it's just it's just you know what, Lotus? It's just more evidence that you and I need to be working in game design. <laughs> Clearly. Well, because I think you said something around the like, what about having it be like an instance thing? And then we got off on that tangent of basically very similar to what it looks like it is. And it's like, oh, that's neat. <laughs> like, yeah. So, yeah. Very, very cool stuff. Yeah. So anyway, uh, cool stuff. So go check out. Go check out the preview. Go look at uh, there's some videos they put up recently that show how that stuff works. Really freaking cool, especially once you're running around with a giant Meru's dig on like stomping. It's just Man, it's imagine if that stuff was in the original Oblivion. That would have been phenomenal. I don't think the engine could have handled it back then, but no, um, probably not. <laughs> probably it's not. Do a lot of. Oh, I wonder well. if that was an original idea from back then that they just weren't able to do, and it got it was like on the Maybe. cutting room floor, and then they they pulled up that stuff, and they're like, "Oh, we could do this." I don't know. You never know. Yeah. Yep. I, it's it's very curious because they ne- it seems like they never really want to throw out ideas. <laughs> Um, Mm -hmm. because some of the stuff that I mean, Merkmeyer was supposed to be originally like an adventure zone, like Craglorn, and then years and years later, we get it as a totally different version of what it was, and it's got a four player arena in it. It's like, okay, so this one some underwent some changes, interesting, but Mm -hmm. it was never thrown away. So, right, man, I want some more Brotherhood content. I want them, even Mm -hmm. if they just expanded it out, if they did like you know, a DLC part two or something and just expanded the story with some more quests and things. That would be fun. Um, Anyway, well, that's it for today's episode. Thank you for joining us. And uh, sorry if we spilled the beans without even knowing it. I promise nobody leaked anything. We're just, (laughs) we're just coming up with stuff. You know, the the trick is, is to just throw out as many ideas as possible. This is, this is why, uh, this is why psychics actually have careers. It's not because they have a good rate of actually predicting anything. Cause if you look at the stats, they're actually really bad at it. Um, throw it all out there. But That's, you throw yep. a bunch of ideas out there and guess which ideas people remember the ones that land. 
not the 50 <laughs> other ones that never actually happened. So that was, I mean, yeah. years ago before Elsewhere dropped, that was our approach at Tales. We named every <laughs> dragon that had been in the series prior to, and surprise, Nafalargus uh, was <laughs> one of the dragons that like called it. <laughs> called it. We called it. We totally called it. You no, know, you just freaking named all the dragons. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. All right. Well, that's it for the show. Thank you for being here, everybody. Until next time, stay safe out there in the crazy world and of life and death. And try not to practice necromancy or you'll piss off the uh, RK worshippers. Um, or, you know, just take matters into your own hand. Become an orbiting body to block out RK's light. You never know. That's what if Man and Marco is behind <laughs> the Thalmer? What if he's the one that shows up in the, t in the teaser? Oh, wow. That would be freaking amazing that would be awesome is that even possible i don't even know all right we'll see you guys later have a uh, stay tuned if you're in chat right now we'll be back with the dungeons and dragons lore cast in about half an hour i'll put up on some uh some uh you know some rap videos or something until then also <laughs> see you guys next time later everybody Bye, everybody thanks for listening to the elder scrolls lore cast if you have something you'd like to contribute to the show please reach out to us at elder scrolls lorecast at gmail.com or on twitter at eso lorecast i really appreciate you listening and i'd love to hear from you soon you've been listening to the robots radio podcast smart shows for interesting people check out all the shows at robotsradio.net